Let's have a look at this related rates problem. Take a moment, pause the video, read through the question. Okay, I'll assume you've read through the question now. So let's draw a diagram. Well, we've got this straight shoreline. And there's this lighthouse on an island three kilometers off the shoreline, off the shoreline from a point P. So three kilometers off the shoreline, we hit this island with a lighthouse on it. So I'm going to call this little island or this little point where the lighthouse is, capital L for lighthouse. And we know that the light is revolving on the lighthouse, so I'm just going to give it a direction just so I can conjure up some sort of mental image about what's going on. Now as the beam of light shines from the lighthouse, a typical example would look like this. The beam of light hits the shore at some point. Let's call that point B, just for where the, uh, for beam, B for beam. And now, you know, due to the fact that this is a, a related rates problem, things are moving. The light is moving, so the beam of light is moving. The, where it hits the shoreline, this point B, that's moving along the shoreline. So things are moving here. And what I'd like to do is try to figure out what kind of quantities I should have in this diagram to talk about the things that are moving. Well, the light's revolving. So this beam is changing. Another typical example of what the beam may look like, okay, it revolves a little bit more, the beam's then out here. But then it may go off to C, and then it may come back, so the beam may be over here. So how do I talk about the position of the beam, and how do I make use of this information that it's rotating at four revolutions per minute? Well, I'll use the angle that the beam of light makes with this line segment LP. So in other words, I'll look at the angle BLP and call that theta. What else do I want to know? Well, I want to know something about how fast the beam of light is moving along the shoreline. So I want to know the rate of change of a position. So what we'll do is we'll just indicate the position of the beam from the point P. I'll call that distance there B. So let's list these quantities now. We have our independent variable time uh, being denoted by T as usual and its units of measure are going to be minutes since minutes is given in the question. And we have two dependent variables. We'll let B of T be the position that the beam of light is from the point P along the shoreline at time T and its units of measure will be in kilometers. And we have theta of t, which is the angle uh, BLP at time t. And its unit to measure, being that it's an angle, is in radians. As usual, we have a static image here, but we want a dynamic one. We want to have in our head a picture of things that are moving. So what's in my head is a diagram that looks like this. And I imagine this beam of light revolving around. It's now out to sea, and it's coming closer to the shoreline. And now it hits the shoreline. There's this point B. It's slowing down. Now it's speeding up again. And now we're off to sea. As the beam of light hits the shoreline, it creates that point B. It's now slowing down, slowing down. Hits point P, and now it starts to speed up again. So the speed this point B travels along the shoreline changes depending on where it is in relation to the point P. We'd like to know what is the speed of that point B moving when we are exactly one kilometer from this point P on the shoreline. So let's list what we know about these quantities. We have that the light makes four revolutions per minute. So this is telling us something about how theta is changing. So d theta dt. Now, since this light is uh, rotating at a constant rate, it means that d theta dt is constant. It's not going to de be dependent on uh, any particular value of the angle theta. So I don't have to restrict this to any particular uh, point in time. So d theta dt, well, there's four revolutions per minute. I want to know, since the units of d theta by t dt are in radians per minute, I'd like to know if it makes four revolutions per minute. What does that mean in terms of how many radians per minute it's changing by? Well, we've got four revolutions per minute. And for every revolution, 
we go through an angle of 2 pi. So there's 2 pi radians for every revolution. So our result is that d theta dt is 8 pi radians per minute. Okay, so we have d theta dt now. We have that rate. Notice we had to interpret how to get that rate from the question and using our quantities. We identified this quantity theta. We had to make sense of the information given in the question to figure out what it was telling us about how theta changes. What do we want to know? Well, we want to know how fast is the beam of light moving along the shoreline. Well, that's asking about dB dt. Since B is telling us the distance the beam of light is from the point P, we want to know how fast that distance is changing. So we want to know dB dt precisely at the moment when B is 1. And so this means that we want to find a relationship between B and theta first. And to get this relationship, we use the diagram. So we have that right triangle. There was theta, 3, and B. And again, tangent's going to relate all those quantities. Tan theta is B over 3. Or in other words, B is equal to 3 tan theta. And so there's our relationship between B and theta. Now we want to find a relationship between the rates of change. So differentiating through, we get that dB dt is equal to 3 secant squared theta d theta dt. Again, theta is a function of t. We're differentiating with respect to t. Tan of theta is a composition of the tangent function and the function theta. So we had to use the chain rule there. Now that we've got our relationship between our rates, we now substitute in all the known information. And so what is our known information in this case? Well, we have when b is equal to 1, when we're 1 kilometer from the shoreline, we need to know what theta is. So we'll start with the diagram. The diagram is, in this particular case, when b is 1, that would be 1, that would be 3, and that would be theta. Why do we need to know what theta is? Well, we have to plug all this stuff into the relationship between their rates. So this is when b is 1. We need to know what 3 secant squared of theta is. Oh, well, wait a minute. We don't need to know what theta is. We just need to know what secant of theta is. This is actually easier because secant of theta is the hypotenuse over the side adjacent. It's the reciprocal of the cosine. Do I know what the hypotenuse is? Well, the two side lengths are 1 and 3, so the hypotenuse has to be the square root of 1 squared plus 3 squared, or in other words, the square root of 10. So that means that secant of theta is root 10 over 3. So that was nice because I didn't need to actually find theta. I just needed to know secant of theta. So that's root 10 over 3, all squared. And we need to multiply that by d theta dt when b is 1. But d theta dt was constant. So it didn't really matter that we're taking it at b is 1. So this is uh, square root of 10 squared is 10 over 9. And d theta dt was, while well, we scroll back up, that was 8 pi radians per minute. So this is 8 pi. And so this becomes 80 pi by 3 kilometers per minute. B was measured in kilometers. T was measured in minutes. So dB dt is 80 pi by 3 kilometers per minute. So now we can write down our concluding statement. The beam travels along the shoreline at 80 pi kilometers per minute. And so that's our answer to the question. Now it's always a good idea after you answer a question to just reflect on what you did and maybe think about um, what happens if you change part of the question or think about it in a different way. In this case, I want to talk about a subtle point that happens with regards to sine. So you'll, you may notice that in my diagram, I drew the arrow, so the lighthouse revolving in this counterclockwise fashion. And then I drew my beam to the left of the point. So at this stage, since b is the distance between p 
and where the beam of light is hitting it, I know that the derivative should be positive because as the light revolves, that point B is going to be moving in this direction. And therefore, little b is going to be increasing, so its derivative should be positive. What about if I consider the point to the right of P? So now it's coming towards point P, and I asked a question about it being one kilometer away. What is the speed of the light? Because notice it didn't tell me which side of the point P I was at. It just says I'm one kilometer. My diagram indicates that I'm on the side of point P where it's moving away from it. But what if I was on the side where it was moving closer? Would anything change in our argument? Would the answer still be the same? So what would happen? Well, if we're over here, then what's dB dt? Well, it would be moving in this direction. And B would be this distance. So B would be shrinking. So B would be shrinking, getting smaller. The distance would be getting smaller. So its derivative should be negative. So I would get, after all of this work, that dB dt was not 80 pi by 3. I'd get an answer of negative 80 pi by 3 because the distance is shrinking here. So what's the rate of change in B? Well, it would be shrinking. The distance would be shrinking. So its derivative has to be negative. So the answer I would have got here would have been that the derivative dB by dt is negative 80 pi by 3. But my answer would still be the same. The beam is traveling along the shoreline at 80 pi by 3 kilometers per minute. The reason is, is because in this concluding statement, I'm writing about the speed. That's really all that matters. In this concluding statement, there was no frame of reference present in the question. That was something I imposed in my solution. I imposed the frame of reference measuring things from point P. I imposed that variable B to talk about the velocity of the beam moving along the shoreline, measuring its position relative to some fixed frame of reference. I then came up with the velocity of it, so as a derivative, and then in my concluding statement, all I want to know is about speed. Not, I don't care which direction it's moving in. I don't care where the frame of reference is. I just want to know what the speed of that point is, the magnitude of its velocity. And so in the concluding statement, I would still have that the beam travels along the shoreline at 80 pi by 3 kilometers per minute. But in my work, my derivative would have been negative. So that's just something to be aware of when you're working on related race problems. You're dealing with a derivative in the question, but the statement of the rates that are given in the question plus your concluding statement are probably going to talk about the speeds, and they may use words like increasing or decreasing. So like in the rocket example, the angle of inclination is increasing at a rate of such and such, or the height of the rocket is increasing at a rate of such and such, or the height of the rocket is decreasing at a rate of such and So these verbal statements about them are going to include something about increasing or decreasing and something about the magnitude of the derivative. And those two bits of the information together give you the magnitude and the direction, so the magnitude and the sign of the derivative. So this is important to keep in mind that we're going to use derivatives in the work, but our concluding statement needs to really talk about the magnitude and then indicate direction using terms like increasing or, de or decreasing. All right, that's it for this example and this section. So thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.